introduction and the warm welcome. This is my first time in Morocco, so I'm super excited to be here today. To introduce myself very quickly, my name's Scott. I'm based in Twitter's office in Dubai, and I manage the relationship between Twitter and Connect Ads, who are our exclusive sales partner here in Morocco and right across the MENA region. When I start to talk about Twitter, I'd like to remind ourselves of four key pillars. The first being live. Twitter is a real-time live platform. If it's happening in the world, it's happening on Twitter. News often breaks 15, 20 minutes before breaking anywhere else. It breaks on Twitter first. It's also a very public platform. Tweets flow freely throughout the platform. And this is a great opportunity for brands, for organic exposure, for content to spread wide and far. It's also incredibly conversational. People come to the platform to join conversations, to see every side of particular conversations. Twitter is an incredibly conversational platform. And it's everywhere. Tweets go far beyond Twitter. They go into TV, they go into outdoor, and they go onto other publisher websites. So tweets flow beyond Twitter. And I want to play this very short video which just reminds ourselves of some of the key moments that have taken place on Twitter in 2017. Can we have sound? What's happening in the world? What's everyone talking about? What's trending? How did it start? We must love each other, protect each other. When will it end? See what's happening in the world right now. Over the years, Twitter has been known as so many different things. We were once the water cooler, we were the town hall. But very simply put, Twitter is what's happening. It's the fastest way for consumers to find out what's happening, and it's the fastest way for brands to connect to consumers. And one of the big things which is going to be taking place this summer is the World Cup. And this is going to be a huge conversation on the platform. And before I start talking about the World Cup, I just want to say a huge congratulations to Morocco on qualification. <laughs> amazing. I know it's been a 20-year wait, so it's amazing to have you guys there. And if we look back to 2006, this is actually before Twitter existed. And we had this key moment that took place during the tournament where Zidane lost his call a little bit in extra time in the final, and this happened. And we had to wait till the next day for the reactions. We had to wait for the newspapers to be printed the very next day. So for us to get the reactions, we had to wait 15, 20 hours to receive that. If we fast forward a little bit to 2014, there was another major incident that took place. And this time it was Suarez, where Suarez bit the Italian Cellini. And Twitter was there. Twitter was there, so we had the ability to see the reactions on the platform straight away. And this heat map shows the conversation from this game, and you can see the conversation absolutely explodes across the globe as soon as that incident took place. So we were able to see the reactions straight away immediately. 
And actually, Suarez came to the platform and apologized. And Cellini also responded to that. And we were able to see this instantly. And brands jumped on this moment. The first one from Bud Light, relax, they twist off. Another from Nando's in the UK, if you're that hungry, why not get your teeth stuck into something really tasty? And my favorite was the one from Snickers, more satisfying than an Italian. And this is really how powerful Twitter can be. If we just take note of the retweets and the favorites on some of these, because the brand was reactive, they got a huge amount of organic exposure. They were able to respond instantly. And that was four years ago. Twitter has come on a long, long way in the last four years. We're no longer just 140 characters. The platform is incredibly more visual now. It's more interactive. We've got galleries of cards for brands to tell stories. We have a huge focus on video. Video has been a focus for us for the last two years, and it's been a huge, huge success. We also have live broadcasts, which allow to have TV quality HD footage with some of the best conversation. We know Twitter is the second, second screen. People are using the platform whilst watching the TV. Now you can do that in the one place. We have Twitter cards, which allow brands to start conversations and allow brands to be part of conversations. And we have things like moments, which allow brands to wrap up content or to tell stories with a series of tweets from either the brand or consumer tweets as well. So Twitter really has moved on from being just 140 characters and this year is going to be MENA's biggest World Cup. With all the teams being represented from the region. And it's absolutely going to be Twitter's biggest World Cup as well. And it's going to be Twitter's biggest World Cup because we've seen tremendous growth in the last couple of years. 1.6 billion people are exposed to tweet content every single month. As I mentioned, one of the key aspects of the platform is how free-flowing tweets are beyond the platform. And this statistic just shows how many people are being exposed to tweet content. We've also seen a huge growth in our daily active user base. This chart shows from Q1 2016, percentage of daily active user growth quarter by quarter right through to Q4 2017. We've had five quarters of consecutive DAU user growth. So the momentum behind the platform is incredibly strong. And we've seen this in the region as well. Arabic is now the third most used language on Twitter. So the first is English, the second is Japanese, and Arabic overtook Spanish back in September 2016. And when brands think about connecting to consumers, I always like to refer back to this quote from Tom, Tom Boudet, who's the Nestle CMO. He said, the consumer will decide how many seconds they give us and we will need to fit within that constraint. We are no longer in control. And I think this is specifically apparent around video and digital video. We're no longer sitting through 30 second, one minute TV commercials. And that's because our consumption of video has changed. If we would take a look back, we used to consume video in a very linear environment. We had a certain destination that we needed to be. We had certain times that we needed to be there. 
And it was a very, very passive experience. It was a shared experience. There was multiple people to a single device. If we fast forward a little bit, we had on demand. We were still limited to the spaces that we could consume video, but we had a little bit more flexibi flexibility. And then fast forward on how we consume video now, it's in real time. We can tune in anywhere, we can have a completely personal experience of consuming video. And this creates challenges for brands and marketeers because consumers have much more choice, we're on multiple devices, and they're spending less time. So we have less time to engage these consumers. And this is a challenge that Twitter is really working hard with brands and marketeers with across the globe to help against this challenge. And the main reason we're able to help with this is around the mindset that users come to Twitter in. They're coming in a discovery mindset. They're looking to be entertained and they're looking to be engaged. And if we as brands and marketeers can be that entertainment and engagement, the connection between brand and consumer is incredibly strong. And there's three types of mindset or discovery mindset that users come to Twitter in. The first is mission-based discovery. So they come into the platform to find out about a specific event or moment or conversation. And when they come to the platform in this mindset, it has a higher memory encoding, plus 31% versus benchmarks. The second is inspiration-based discovery. So they might have been inspired by something and they want to explore that topic more. And again, it drives a stronger memory encoding. And the third and final, which I think is the most exciting for brands and marketeers, is the completely open-mindedness. In one of the keynotes we had earlier, the, the, the lady was speaking about interruption and intrusiveness of ads. On Twitter, we don't have that because consumers are looking to be entertained and looking to be engaged, and they're choosing to consume video or brand content. So what does this mean for brands? Well, it means the audience is more attentive. It means they're more responsive and they're more trusting as well. And looking at video specifically, video ads are 2x more memorable. <clears throat> so the mindset of Twitter users, I would always ask you guys to remember. The other uniqueness of Twitter users, which I think is super important for brands and marketeers, is how influential they are. So they're 38% more likely to post opinions about brands and products. And what this means for marketeers is that if we influence these users, they become brand advocates and they tell your brand story for you. Again, making the messaging go way beyond the Twitter user base. And I've mentioned it a lot. I've mentioned Twitter had a strong and continues to have a strong focus with video. And it really is the most impactful way to connect with consumers. 1.2 billion video views on Twitter every day. That's grown 2x in the past 12 months. And we continue to see this grow day by day. The global population is 7.5 billion just puts this number into perspective. And not only are consumers extremely hungry to consume video content, they're also extremely likely to share video content. So tweets with video are 6x more likely to be tweet, retweeted than tweets with photos. So they're incredibly hungry to consume this content and they're extremely likely to share this content, which is giving brands and marketeers organic, viral exposure. Consumers are, are loving the content and loving digital video, and marketeers are, are saying it's working. 87% have had a positive ROI with digital video. So it's definitely a big, big shift.
And when we think about building a strategy and connecting with these, I think it falls into these three buckets. One for brands to own moments, another to connect, and third and finally, to engage. And when we talk about owning, we talk about owning the moment. That might be brand specific moments that they want to own. It might be product launches, for example. It might be events. There's also cultural moments. World Cup, we know exactly when the Morocco games are going to be. There's an opportunity for brands to own that moment on Twitter. Connecting is about connecting to audiences around their passion points. Connecting to those conversations that your target audience are taking part in. And engaging with them to drive real meaningful engagements, which is going to drive ROI for your activity. And the first, we have the opportunity to own the conversation. It's the promoted trend. It's a, our equivalent of a homepage takeover. And there's a good opportunity to own conversation about product specific or brand specific moments, but also cultural moments that we know are going to be take place, Ramadan, World Cup, for example. Video is working incredibly well. You've got the opportunity to promote video and connect to these audiences through passion points. We've also got the ability for brands to sponsor premium TV quality content. So this is the ability to be able to run pre-roll on TV quality content. This example is from Lay's which then kicks in to the real-time highlight from the Champions League. And third and finally, we have the ability to drive deep and meaningful engagement. This is something called the video website card. This is how it looks in the user's timeline. And once the consumer clicks on it to go to the destination page, the video stays at the top whilst the destination page loads. The consumer can scroll down to consume that content and go right back to the top where the video will continue playing. So driving deep and meaningful engagement for brands. And with that, thank you very much for having me. I hope you enjoyed and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you.